Hello everybody. How are you doing today? Hello. I have a message for you guys today. I know you will love it. Hi, Christopher. Hi, um, Olaju. Is the music too loud? Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me, okay? Welcome, everybody. God bless you for watching. Feel free to invite your friends. I have a good message for you guys. Can you hear me? I want to enjoy this music a little bit before I start. Hi, Tonya. Hi, Skelly. Hi, Serendipity. Today's message is titled So this message is titled your will not my will God's will not your will let me lower this a little bit this message has been I've been crying all day because of this message I know I, I posted earlier that I'll be coming online but it took a while because it's been heavy on me so just bear with me today okay Janet Sano, God bless you always. God bless you too. God bless you all for watching. Feel free to invite your friends. Let me know if you can hear me. Um, I kind of want the music on today because I need to be in that um <laughs> that mode. Okay, so um, I know you guys remember that I had taken a break for two weeks. Um, I wasn't on Facebook for two weeks. And while I was gone, I was studying the word. And then on the 26th of November, at like 12.40 a.m., I was studying the word. And um, before I started, I started praying to God. I was like, God, let your will be done in my life. Not my will. The will, not my will. And then I say, God, I want you to increase in me while I decrease. I learned that from um, when I was reading about John the Baptist of how he was talking about he's going to decrease and Jesus Christ will increase. So while I was praying, um, I now got this um, title, your will, not my will. So I sent it as a text message to myself on my phone. And um, that's this was around. I'm going to do a screenshot and post it in this video when I'm done. So I sent it as a text message to my phone at 12 40 something a.m on the 26th so i put your will not my will and then hours later god told me what his will was for me so i typed it and i texted to myself too i actually saw that today and i was crying he said that um my my will is to his will for me to for me to do is to bring people to him without condemning them because he wants everybody to be saved and he doesn't want anybody to be condemned. And that was a text message that I text myself. I couldn't do a video then because I was still on my um my break from Facebook. So I just saved that on my phone. So the will was for me to bring people to God. I'm sorry, I'm going to cry a lot today. I'm sorry, okay? I'm just telling you ahead of time because this is all I've been doing all day today. So, my what I need to do is to bring people to God without condemning them. 
because God wants his children to be saved. He doesn't want them to be condemned. And that's what I've been doing lately. All these videos that I've been doing is for people to be saved. But before I became born again, this wasn't what I was doing. I was living life the way I wanted to live life. It was about me, my will. And because I wasn't doing God's will for a long time, I suffered a lot. A lot of things went wrong for me. I got married and I didn't seek God. I just got married on my own. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that I made in my life because it's still haunting me till today, even though I'm no longer married. But it still haunts me every day. Because I got married to somebody that I wasn't supposed to get married to. Because I was doing my own will, not God's will. When, when, when you live your life and you don't know what God wants you to do, you're going to suffer. Nothing will work for you. Can you guys hear me? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Oh God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I've been not, I've been wanting to come online but I've been crying so I kind of waited but it's still coming so I just I don't know what to do so all these years that I've been living my life without consulting God and I suffered so much when I gave my life to God November of last year I started trying to live according to his will but even then I still did not know what my will what his will for me was even when I started preaching online, I wasn't still clear of what I needed to be doing for God. People have prophesied in the past telling me what to do, but I still wanted God to tell me himself. Sometimes I get frustrated and I, I feel like I need to do something, but everything I want to do is still part of my will and the will that he wants me to do. Sometimes I'm not patient enough or something. I don't know. So last night something happened. And I have some scriptures to share, but let me just tell you guys this before I start reading scriptures, okay? So last night something happened and it got me worried all night. I couldn't sleep. so loud it got me worried all night I couldn't sleep I was just restless I was worried I don't even think I prayed last night before sleeping because I always pray but yes I was so worried so when I woke up today I was like I was just in a kind of mood like I say is all these things I'm doing is it even worth it you know like me preaching doing all these things even worth it that maybe I should just maybe I should just start doing things that I want to do maybe I should just start doing things that I want to do because I don't know if all these things that I'm doing if this is what I need to be doing you know so I now got my laptop I went downstairs with my laptop I was like okay I'm gonna start looking for job so i can work a lot of hours i can work so much and save so much money because i have so many projects that i would like to complete meanwhile for like three months now god has been telling me to wait 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 and sometimes i'm tired i'm like what am i waiting for but all this while i didn't know i'm waiting so i can read the word know him more <laughs> since I was born I've never been somebody that will wait I'm always somebody that is like always working working always trying to work do trying to make money and do all these things so today I took my downstairs I was angry I said you know what I need to start looking for jobs 
don't want to work. I don't care if it's two jobs, three jobs. I just want to work. I'm just, I don't know if I should be doing this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So when I when I put my laptop down, I went to go make food to eat. So before I started eating, it's like like something was speaking to me to go to Facebook on my phone. And then I clicked on Facebook. I'm sorry, I'm not reading your comments, okay? I'll read it later. Okay, so when I opened my phone. I don't know how I saw this video, but on my news feed, I saw a lady that was preaching on the street. A young lady, she was preaching on the street. This is in another country. So it's like the voice was telling me to watch it. I started to watch her. So I clicked and I went to her page. She's not even my friend. Like one of my friends shared it on their wall, so it appeared on my news feed. <sighs> Sorry guys, I need to lower this song because it's not helping me right now. <sighs> so the girl was preaching on the street, like some people were watching, some people would walk away. And so when I clicked and I went to her page, she's very young, very young girl. I saw that the girl was, she, she had videos where she went to India, India to preach. People that were never Christians, she will preach, they will give their lives to God. She will lay hands on people. People were getting well. People were speaking in tongues. And if you look at the picture, you will know that. Where she was is not even a comfortable place. It doesn't even look, you know, India is like, kind of like, I don't know if Nigeria is even looking better, but the pictures, you could tell that she wasn't even, really, she didn't care if the place was beautiful. The girl was just doing God's work, you know? So I, I kind of left it, started eating, and it's like, the thing, the spirit, the Holy Spirit was telling me to go back on the page again and look more. So I started looking at more and more. So I was not like, so what, what am I looking at this for? What am I looking at this for? I just want to look for jobs. I don't want to look at these things. <laughs> and that reminded me, was like, remember you said you want my will to be done in your life, not your will? <laughs> so you remember you say you want my will to be done in your life, not your will. You want to decrease while I increase. So what do you need your laptop for? What you're about to do, is that my will or is that your will? <laughs> All the years that you've been doing your own will, you've been working so hard. Where did that get you? Have I been taking care of you? <laughs> Are you lacking anything? <laughs> you now reminded me of the text message that I sent myself that he told me my will is to bring people to him and not condemn and just bring people to him so they can be saved my will my, his will for my life is not for me to go and be working all these full-time overtime jobs where i would not have time for him so i couldn't continue with the laptop i just closed the laptop i started to read scriptures about god's will I started reading stories about jesus <laughs> and he started to remind me of when I went to go marry my ex-husband when that was my will that he started to remind me of how I suffered of how things went so bad of how I'm still suffering because of that decision that I made <laughs> and another thing I started thinking I'm like okay so if I want to go start looking for all this job 
is it not God that will still grant me the job? What if he refuses to grant me the jobs? So what am I trying to say? Anytime that I try to deviate from his will, he has a way of bringing me back to it. The Holy Spirit kind of takes me to something to go watch or takes me to something to go read so I can stay on track. And sometimes God's will for you is not something that you may want. It may not be interesting. It may not be conducive. It may not be colorful. It may not be comfortable. But you have to do it. Because that's why you're here. Devil will be putting thoughts in your mind. Why do you want to do this? Why are you doing this? You can be doing this instead of that. Why are you doing this? But I've been doing the other thing for years though. For 35 years. My life was not any better. So I started praying to God. I said, God, forgive me for even thinking of what I was about to do. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I'm only human. I break down sometimes. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry, guys. I don't want to cry. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Sorry, guys. I hope you were hearing me. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Can you guys hear me? Oh my god. Oh god. Oh my god. Please if you can hear me, can somebody say something? God bless you, Victoria. God bless you all for watching. I'm sorry I had to. Oh God, I feel better now that I told you guys this. It's like I, it was so heavy on my chest. I had to let it out. God has a way of dealing with me. He has a way of dealing with me. And he does it in public. I don't understand why. I don't understand why. I don't understand why. I don't understand why. But I have some scriptures for you guys. It's a lot of scriptures. Uh, I love you guys. Basically, this message is just saying that if you if you deviate from God's will for you and you try to do your will, initially it may work out for you, but at the long run you're gonna suffer. You're gonna suffer so much. You're gonna suffer until you get back on track and you do that thing that he wants you to do. People may not even know you're suffering because you may hide it well, but you know that you're suffering. So today you wanna beg God to help you recognize his will for you. What is it that he sent you here to do? Why are you here? What are you supposed to do? What is that special gift that you have that he wants you to use to his glory? That's what today's message is all about. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Sorry, I need to go back to these songs. Oh, God. Oh, God. I've been crying all day. Oh, no. I, don't, I see some other people talk about God and they don't cry. But why do I have to cry like this? Why? Why? <sighs> yeah, hi. Tracy, I love you too. I love you too. I love you guys. I love you. Alright, so I'm going to start reading some scriptures for you guys. I copied it so I can paste it here and just read from here, okay? It's a lot of scriptures. Just bear with me, okay? Will you cry too, Victoria? <laughs> That's good to know that I'm not the only one because <laughs> I cry too much. I can't help it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be crying all day. <laughs> Alright, so the first scripture that I'm going to read, let me lower this a little bit. Because these songs, they really get to me. Is John 6, 38, 40. This is Jesus talking. He says, For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. 
and this is the Father's will which had sent me, that all of which he had given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son, and believe it on him, may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So Jesus Christ is saying that he didn't come to this world because he wanted to or because of his own will. He came because of God, that God sent him here. And if you read about Jesus, every time he was talking, he kept telling people that whatever he's saying is what the Father is telling him to say. It's not his words. So if Jesus Christ could come and be so obedient to God's will and do everything that God sent him, why can't we do that? Why can't we? His his own his mission was even more like more difficult because he had to die for us and they had to punish him. They had to nail him to the cross. We don't even most of us don't even have to go through all that. Our will is probably just to preach or just to sing or just to help people. It doesn't require us getting nailed to a cross, but we still run away from doing it. Why? 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 John five John five thirty says, "I can I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of Thy Father which has sent me." This is still Jesus Christ talking. And then again, it says, John four thirty one thirty four. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, "Master." But he said unto them, I have meat, I have meat to eat that ye know of. No not of, I'm sorry. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Had any man brought him out to eat? They were wondering if someone had brought him food to eat, because when they left to go get food, he was hungry. But they didn't know he had started talking to a Samaria woman that came to get water from the well, and she had gone back to get her people. I'm just explaining the story. Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So as you can see, Jesus was consistent. He was consistent with the will of God. Never did he deviate. But for us humans, me, we keep deviating. We keep running. We do God's will a little bit for a month or two. And then it's like we're frustrated. Now we want to go do our own will. Like today I got my laptop. I want to start looking for so many jobs so I can work 24 hours or whatever a day. And then I have time for God again. Just because of something that happened last night. I want to just forget the will of God for my life. But Jesus was consistent regardless of what happened. He was still on course with the, the mission that God sent him. But some of us, when something bad happens or once there's a small, whatever, something little shakes us, we want to just switch and do our own thing instead of doing God's thing for us, God's will for us. I'm an example, so I'm not judging anybody. I'm just using myself today. But I know some of you guys know what I'm talking about. You, 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 you want to serve God. You want to do what God wants you to do. But the moment things are a little difficult or somebody insults you or... People don't support you like you know they will. You switch and you start doing what you want to do. Forgetting that you already promised God that this is what you're going to do for him. Jesus Christ did not change any minute. He was consistent with the mission. Even when it became so hard, he still stayed focused. Still stayed focused. This is the scripture that I really love. This is long, but just listen to this story. Matthew 26, 36 to 46. It says, And then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsem Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful. He was sorrowful and very heavy, just like I felt today. I was or last night I was very sorrowful. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went the further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. 
and he cometh unto the disciples and find that them find that them asleep and said unto Peter what could ye not watch with me one hour watch and pray what ye enter what ye enter not into temptation that ye I'm sorry that ye enter not into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak he went away again the second time and prayed saying oh my father if this cup may not pass away from me except I think it thy will be done Hiya do you know how hard it is when you know that you're about to die but you're still saying that God's will should be done put yourself in his shoes for one minute if it was you and you know that in a few hours they will be killing you crucifying you would you still say you want his will to be done or would you look for a way to flee huh. oh my god thank you lord <sighs> and he came and found them asleep again for their eyes were heavy and he left them and went away and prayed the third time saying the same words then come and eat to his disciple and said unto them keep on now and take your rest behold the hour is at hand and the son of man is betrayed into the hand of sinners rise let us be going behold he is at hand that doth betray me what this what, what I learned from reading this today is sometimes while you're doing God's will things may get so hard and everybody will forget you you'll be alone Jesus took these people to go pray they just kept sleeping they couldn't even stay up for one hour he was alone. He was so sorrowful. He was, it was, he was sad. Maybe he was even crying. But there was nobody to so, to like say, sorry, don't worry. He was by himself. But he still insisted that God's will be done. Me, I was shaking last night by something. And today I already had my laptop. I wanted to go start doing my own will again. I wasn't even faced with death or anything, just something that is just minor. And I already wanted to change my mind. But Jesus Christ did not do that even when he knew he was about to die. Jesus. Oh my God. Oh Lord. I always want to learn from Jesus. I always want to live the way he lived. I just want to be like him because I don't understand how someone could be so perfect like that. I don't know if you guys wonder that too. Like, don't you just want to be like Jesus? Isn't that why we're all trying to be born again and be, be righteous to live like Christ? It's not easy though. Nobody should deceive you. But with God helping you, it's easy. Otherwise, I'm telling you, it's not easy. 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 I know you guys that are watching this, you don't know what God's will for you is. You don't know what you're sent here for. And I was like that for a while. I didn't know what I was meant to do here, you know. It's not like God will come down to your room and tell you, oh, this is what I want you to do. Sometimes it can be so confusing and you get frustrated. You're like, okay, so what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? I don't know what to do. It's like you're confused. What am I going to do? Do you know that God speaks to us? If you really seek God and you... You, you ask him to tell you what your will is. Do you know that he actually speaks to us? When I was reading the Bible at 12 something, he gave me that title. Your will, not my will. And then late, hours later, it's like, it's, like, it's like I could hear it. He was telling me, you are to bring people to me and not condemn them. It wasn't like he was talking. It's like, it's like it, was, it was placed in my heart or something like and I was just writing it. 
to, to bring people to me without condemning them. Because God wants everybody to be saved and not condemned. So if you want God to tell you what your will is, start asking for, for Him to tell you. When you pray, instead of you always praying, 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 I've learned something. Try to meditate a lot too when you pray. Like when you ask God for something or when you pray to God, don't just pray and sometimes you pray and then you can pause and wait to see if God will speak to you. Meditate on it. So let's say, for instance, you say, God, what would you like? What is your will for me, for my life? Please tell me what you want me to do. What was I sent here to do? Please, Lord, I really need you to tell me because I don't know what to do. And then just pause. Just jump out of that prayer and run to your job or whatever. Just chill. And it's like he will start giving you ideas or something will start ministering to you. It works for me all the time. That's how I get some of these messages that I come and give you guys. I could just be in the bathroom brushing my mouth and an idea would just come or a topic would just come and I would just quickly run and go put it on my phone and save it. Sometimes when you get a brilliant idea or something, it's to you. Or where do you think it's coming from? John 10, 27 said, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So if you are God's sheep, you will definitely hear his voice. You will definitely know when he's speaking to you. You will know. Or if you're watching this video, there could be something that I've said here that is meant for you specifically. Maybe it's a confirmation of what somebody has already told you. God has so many ways of speaking to us. In this message, there could be something that I said that I didn't even know I said, but it was really for you because somebody already told you that before and now it just matches what you've heard particular video could be for for you that's how God speaks or you could open the Bible and you'll be reading and there's a particular verse that is speaking to you you just have to be sensitive in the spirit to know first Peter 4 10 to 11 it says for God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts use them well to serve one another do you have a gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength that and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. What are they trying to say? When God created each of us, he gave us specific gifts. There is something you are really, really good at. You've been good at it since you were little. You don't even have to try. You're just good at it. Maybe the will of God concerning your life is for you to use that gift to bring glory to Him. Like me, I'm preaching now to you guys. I've always been someone that could convince people to do something. I've always been someone that people like listening to. And now I'm using it to His glory. This is effortless for me. I don't put so much effort doing it. You're probably like that. Or like it says in the Bible, your, your work is to help people. You're just like helping people. But now maybe he wants you to help people to his glory. Maybe help churches or help people that homeless people, orphans, widows, and win souls for him. We all have different gifts. When you ask him what your 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 will, his will is for you, he will speak to you. If you're a sheep, you will hear him. And that gift that you have, it will come to use for you. Like you will use it so well to please him. Right now, you may be using it the wrong way. But once you understand what you're meant to do or why God sent you here, that gift will make more sense to you. Maybe you are a teacher. Maybe you can teach people like you know how to teach. Maybe your job or your, your the will of God for you is to teach people the word. There are some people that when they break down the Bible, man, it makes so much sense. Or maybe you're just a wise person. You, you have so much wisdom. Use that to the knowledge, to the glory of God. Or maybe you can sing. 
at the club or karaoke or wherever you go, you sing, people are all happy on stage, you sing, use that voice to win souls for God. Sometimes the will of God for us may not be so hard to tell for some people because it's clear, but some people it's hard. But some people probably don't really have a lot of gifts or they don't even know what their gifts are. But some people know exactly what their gift is. Some people know exactly what their gift is. Maybe you have a presence, you know, and people like to follow you wherever you go. Or once you once you do, once you call people, they all want to go where you go. Maybe you're just to evangelize and bring people to church since they like following you everywhere. So maybe your job is to make them follow you to church. You have to pray and ask God because if you don't start doing his will, you're going to suffer. And not only that, you'll go to hell. Jesus Christ from day one that he was born, he was doing God's will. Till last minute, he was doing God's will. Like that's all he came here for. You didn't see Jesus Christ forgetting about God's will and going to the club to dance. Or going to chat with some people and gossip with people. Or keep a lot of friends and forget what he came here for. He was focused. And he knew his time was short. Some of us, we live as if our time here is so long. It's like we, we live as if we're going to be 100 years old. Jesus did not even live till what? He, he was not even up to, I don't know. He, didn't, he died young. What if he kept delaying and said, don't worry, I got time. I got time. I'll do God's work. He didn't delay. He did his work because he knew that the time was short. Jesus did not stay till he was old. He did not have a walking stick. He did not stay till he was so old and before he died. He came. He did the work. He was gone. He left. So when God is calling you to do his work, maybe you don't have much time. Maybe you were not meant to be old. It's not a curse if you die young. Jesus died young. It wasn't a curse. A lot of people in the Bible, great men of God in the Bible, most of them didn't live till they were old. <laughs> Proverbs 3, 5-6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on... on on your own, lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy part. You have to trust God. You have to trust God and stop trying to figure things out on your own. That's what I did for so long. I thought I knew everything I was doing. I had everything under control. I didn't ask God for I was just doing everything on my own. My marriage is a big example. I thought I knew it all. I was ready. I didn't want to hear what anybody had to say. And then I went to go marry the devil. I was living with the devil for years. He would look me in the face and tell me, I'll kill you today. I'm going to destroy you. He was speaking things to me that I didn't think any human being could tell me. I will kill you. I will destroy you tonight. You think you're Princess Belemzi. I will show you that you're nothing. And I'm looking at this person and I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? Who is this person? Because I, I was doing my will. I went to marry the devil. But people didn't know. People thought, oh, she's happy, she's married, she's popular. But no. Several times I'll wake up at night and he's not sleeping. He's looking at me, telling me, today I'll kill you. And I'll be like, please leave me alone. I'm tired. I'll go back to sleep. God saved me. Why would I go back to sleep when someone threatened to kill me? That's because God had plenty for me that even though I was stubborn he still loved me and he saved me from that because I wasn't done he wasn't done with me yet he still wanted to use me to do stuff some people are not that lucky though but I don't know why he loved me so much because I would have died I would have died that's what he was reminding me today he said you want to go back to doing your will do you remember how that, that how that turned out the last time you did it <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 1 John 2, 15 to 17. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. All these things that you're seeing in this world will fade away. It says it here in the Bible. I'm not making these things up. I'm so glad that God gives me scriptures to back whatever he's sending me to say. They're all going to fade. You see, if you do the will of God, if you do his will, he said that you're going to abide forever. You're going to live forever. Meaning when you die here, you're not going to go to hell. You'll make heaven. You make heaven. You say, love not the world. All these things that we want, these things that we want, these are things of the world. I kept telling you guys, Jesus Christ did not want the things of the world. He was not, he didn't care about the things of the world because he knows that where he came from, they have the best things over there. The houses, the mansions, they are like way better. He wasn't worried about what they had. Nothing interested him. Because he knew that this is all temporary. This is what you see here is something you see today you don't see tomorrow. But where he's going to or where he came from. They're permanent stuff. Don't get carried away with this world. This world has nothing to offer. It's only temporary excitement or enjoyment. And after that comes pain. Pain. Regrets. I'm not using people as an example. I'm using myself. 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 There's nothing in this world. I don't care what anybody says. People may deceive you. I say, don't mind her. She's just talking. She don't know what she's saying. They're not telling you the truth. They're suffering. They're crying silently. They want you to suffer with them. They don't love you. Anybody that wants you to be born again loves you. You may not like them right now, but you will thank them later. John 9 31 I read this today and I was like wow it says we know that God doesn't listen to sinners but he's ready to hear those who worship him and do his will if you worship God and you do the will that he is his will he's gonna listen to you but if you keep being stubborn you want to just keep doing your will he doesn't listen to sinners Why do you want to live a life where your father doesn't listen to you? Devil, devil doesn't like you. He just wants to kill you, destroy you. That's all devil wants. Believe it or not. Think about your life. Since you were born, you've been doing things that you wanted. Where has that gotten you to? Are you currently where you want to be in life? Just use, just be truthful to yourself. Okay? Like, I'm not condemning anybody. I'm not judging you're by yourself where you are right now. Think about what I just said. Are you currently where you want to be in life? Are you happy with all these choices that you've made in life? It's not about what you've accomplished. What are you going to use that for? Even if you have 10 degrees or diplomas or whatever, are you going to take that to heaven? Who are you going to be using your diplomas for over there? How many souls have you won? Are you, is your soul saved? What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Romans 12, 1 to 2. It says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. Then He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing. And perfect it says don't copy the behavior and customs of this world but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think until God transforms you you will always think like the, the worldly people think you have to let him transform you let him work on you so you can be filled in so that way he can direct your parts he can tell you what to do for now, if, if you haven't given your life to God, you can't even 
know what God wants you to do. Because <laughs> you're still living to please the devil. First, you have to be born again. And just let God transform your life. Like God transformed my life. Everybody that sees me preaching that knew me. Oh, the other day I sent a message out. I sent a message out because um, there's an event that a friend of mine is doing. And she wants me to minister on the 17th of December at my church. Royal Place Ministries. The flyer is on Facebook. And she wanted me to minister. So when I shared that flyer um, to all my friends on WhatsApp. A lot of those people on my WhatsApp are people from party days when I used to party and throw parties. So some of them, when they saw the flyer and they saw, they were like, oh, princess, are you doing a party? I'm like, please read the flyer. And one guy was like, you're preaching? <laughs> you're preaching? When did this one start? Where did you start preaching? Girl, I thought this was a party flyer. Let me know when you have something for party. I'm not coming to church. <laughs> I was like, there is time for everything. There was a time that I invited you to party. Now this is time for you to come hear me preach the gospel. He said, nah, I just, I'm still in my time for party. I said, no, I just want you to come hear me preach. There could be a message for you. A lot of people were shocked. They're like, girl, you're now a minister. Some girl was like, girl, I can't wait to come see you preach. I said, well, I've been doing that on Facebook. But some of them are not my friends on Facebook. They're just my phone contacts. They were shocked because this is just in a matter of months and I've already changed. God has transformed my life and now I'm on flyer trying to be a minister to preach the gospel in a church or at an event from somebody that didn't go to church for 15 years. Now it's preaching to people because I let God transform me. I, I let him change my life. I surrendered to him. I did. You could do that too. These people that you're worried about, that is making you not to give your life to God. Honestly, they don't really care about you. Everybody needs to worry about himself or herself. If you keep listening to these people and you don't want to give your life because of a friend that will mock you or because of family that will make fun of you or you're, you're missing the point. What if, what if something happens to you? Those people, they can't save a soul. They were just going to cry and do a, wait, um, a burial for you or something at the funeral or whatever. And that's it. They're not going to go beyond that. They're not going to go and save you from going to hell. Why are you worry about them? This is personal. This is between you and God. Establish a relationship with your God. Everybody will give account for himself. Your mom, your dad, nobody can save you. Nobody can save you. Nobody can save you. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All the things I used to do before, they're, all, they're gone. Sometimes the devil will flash thoughts to me and tell me, Oh, remember when you used to do this? When you used to do that? Wasn't that fun? And I'll start thinking about it. I'm like, nah, it's okay. I've been there, done that. I don't see the fun in it. But if you're not strong or if you're not, if you're not always connected with God to God, it's so easy for you to <laughs> backslide. <laughs> Especially with the kind of wall that we live in. It's, it's a sinful wall. Everything you open, everybody, some people will stop talking to you because you always talk about God. You may even lose friends. You may be lonely at some point because everybody is still trying to be worldly and you're like you're the only one in your own world and sometimes you're like you know what i don't think i like this kind of life i just i'm just gonna go with my friends let me go party and drink and do all that stuff it was fun but you know you think it's fun but you know deep down in your heart that you were not so happy doing it that's why you gave your life in the first place but just because you feel like you're lonely or you want to feel among again you go back to it what if i went to the party that night you just die there's an accident and you just die in that car crash or you, that's it for you. You go to hell. God gives us the gift of life every day. He's the giver of life. When you close your eyes to sleep. If the giver of life says, okay, 
Tomorrow, I'm not giving you life. Your life ends today. You're not going to wake up tomorrow. Your life is in his hands. Not your hands. You can just sleep. And he said, okay, well, you know what? I've given her life for 35 years. I'm done with giving her life. She's not going to wake up tomorrow. Have you ever thought about life like that? He can take that life anytime he wants. It could be a nap. And you don't wake up from the nap. And you're healthy. You went to the doctor. Everything is fine with you. You don't have high blood pressure. You don't have nothing. But the gift of life says, okay, it's time for me to take it. I'm done with you. I've been trying to try to tell you to come to me and you're not listening. It's done. Time is up. Romans 10, 9 to 11. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with thy heart, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ and you're watching this, or if you've accepted him before but you've backslided, just rededicate your life or just give your life to God. Give your life to God. I know you've heard these messages over and over and over and over. Just think about it. What if today is the last time I hear this message? What do you have to lose? Give your life to God. I don't regret giving my life to God. I don't regret it. The devil is always fighting to win me back. But God doesn't want me to go back. That's why he keeps taking my mind to something that will make me remember that I'm doing his will, not my will. God fights for me. Holy Spirit is always trying to talk to me to tell me to do the right thing. The girl's video that I saw today, she's not even my friend on Facebook. I didn't even want to go to Facebook. I was just about to make food to eat. I just carried my phone and I started looking. And even when I looked at it, it told me to go back and keep watching. Because I listen to the Spirit. I, I pay attention to God's Spirit. I let the Spirit lead me. If I wasn't letting the Spirit lead me, I would have just taken my laptop and started applying for all these jobs that I've been doing in the past that stressed me out. I, I still was broke anyway because I, I don't know my money always used to go to. Some people, God wants them to do his work full time. You want to be full time minister. Some people, God wants you to work and do his work part time or whatever. But some of us, the mission that he has for us is too much. And he knows that once we start involving ourselves in so many things, we're going to forget doing what he sent us here to do. I'm one of those people. Whenever I try to do things that I want to do, they don't work. They don't work for me at all. I've tried so many things. They don't work. I work harder than other people. Some people just work less and they, they get what they want. Mine, it takes me a while. I still don't get it sometimes. Because that's not what he wants me to do. Ah, oh, God. Everybody is different. For you, it could be different. That's why you need to pray today. Once you get off this video, pray and tell him, God, tell me what your will is for my life. And make sure you wait and see if he tells you anything. If you don't hear anything, just keep asking. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek. Keep seeking. Keep asking. And it will make it clear to you. If you have pastors or spiritual leaders, it's good to have a spiritual leader, one or two, so they can also direct you. Read the word. Sometimes God tells me stuff through reading the Bible. I just open it and that message that I'm looking at is for me. It's a confirmation or something like, okay, thank you, Lord. But you're not going to know all these things until you're born again and you let him work in you. And then you start to understand how he speaks to you. Well, how how can you understand all these things? You're not even born again. It's hard. You have to first be born again. Go to church. Read his word. Be connected. Do things that pleases God. 
listen to his gospel music, praise him, just be around the atmosphere of God, like, and then you start to, you start to hear him speak to you. I took two weeks off, and he told me so many things. This message I'm giving during that two weeks off. Oh God. Philippians 2.13 says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases in Him. Pleases Him. Pleases Him. God is working in you. He's giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. So once you become born again, just allow Him to work in you. And He will start putting things in your heart that pleases Him. You will start thinking good thoughts. That's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit helps you fight all these sinful thoughts because the devilish thoughts, when devil is controlling your thoughts, all you're thinking of is lustful things, evil things, jealousy, envy. Haven't you wondered why the devil is always putting negative thoughts in your head? You can't be truly happy for people. You're always having negative thoughts, but with God, it's love. You're gentle. You're peaceful. You're not arrogant. You're humble. It's all the good stuff that comes with God's spirit. Why would anybody leave that and go for the worldly stuff? Why? Even as I'm doing this video, devil hates it. Some of you that are watching it, he's whispering in your ears and saying, Don't mind this girl. She's just acting. Don't listen to what she's saying. But you know that what I'm saying is true though. The Holy Spirit is even trying to talk to you too, but... Maybe the devil's voice is louder than his voice because you're still in the world and you will let the devil's voice suppress the Holy Spirit's voice. God wants all of his children to be saved so they can make heaven. But the devil wants the hope opposite of that. He wants us to die. He wants to kill us because since he can't be in heaven, he wants us to go to hell with him. Jeremiah 29 11 says for I know the thoughts that I think toward you Say the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end God has good plans for us We just have to let him work in us So his plans can come to pass He's he, you have to be patient when you're working with God don't expect things to be like oh God Tell me what I need to do now and you want it right now. No, that's not how it works you have to work with his time. You may ask for him to tell you something on Monday. He may not even tell you till two weeks later or three weeks later. But you have to wait. With God, you have to be patient. You can't always be rushing him. Just because you haven't heard anything now doesn't mean you won't hear. He's trying to see if you truly, truly are committed. If you truly have given your life. Or if you're just doing it now because you want to gain something from it. Or he's trying to see. He's trying to test your patience. Some people, things don't go out the way they want. In a few weeks, they're out. Before you know, they're back to their old ways. And people are wondering, I thought you just gave your life to God. Hey, well, yeah, I did, but now nah, I'm not. How are people going to believe you next time you use it again? They'll be like, well, this girl is not even serious. She just preached. She has a video preaching, and today she's doing this. The people you even brought to God, they were all backslide because now you're not even a good example anymore. Mark 3, 32 to 35. I love this. There was a crowd sitting around Jesus and someone said, your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. Jesus replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Then, the, then he looked at those around him and said, look, these are my mother." And brothers anyone who does God's will in my brother I'm sorry anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and mother Jesus is saying that when we come to this world and we do the will of God we are his brothers and sisters and mothers when we come like if we're doing God's will Jesus sees us as his family but if we're not doing God's will he doesn't recognize us yourself are you doing God's will 
you know when you're doing God's will. Because when you start doing God's will, you will be bringing people closer to God. So whatever you do, if it's not bringing anybody closer to God, then you're really not doing His will. Don't deceive yourself. Deep down, you have a fear inside of you that what if I die tonight? Some people act like they're not scared of things like this, but they are when they're by themselves. They think about it. They're like, you know what? I could just die tonight when I sleep. When they're by themselves, they think about these things. But when they're around people, they act like they don't care. But they care when they're alone. That's the Holy Spirit trying to tell you to change. Don't worry about what people say. It's a personal race. Luke 9, 23, 26. And he said to them, to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow him. Follow me. Jesus to say that if we're gonna come to him and serve him we need to deny ourselves i had to deny myself i had to deny who i was the the popular promoter and all that i, I let all that go now i have a new identity in christ and i'm a child of god a servant of god my life is not my own though i'm selfless it's all about God. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage if he gain the world, the whole world, and lose himself, or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come on his in his own glory, and in his fathers, and in his fathers, and of the holy angels. Jesus said we're ashamed of him now. If we don't want to talk about him or if we don't want to accept him now, he will be ashamed of us when he comes back to take us to heaven. You don't want to be one of those people. The life here is temporary. It's temporary. It's temporary. Some people live till 20 years. Some people live 15 years. They're gone. Some people live 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. It's really... Have you guys noticed? It's so hard to find people that make 100 years old anymore. People die at 60-something, 50-something, 70-something. People don't even live that long anymore like the way they used to live in the Bible. It's like the, the people keep dying younger and younger now. In the Bible, some people live till 150. At some point, it was almost 1,000 years. But now it keeps going down. It's scary. So when you're getting to an age like 40, 50... You should start getting scared. It could be any day. It could be any day. Romans eight fourteen says, "For as many are, as a for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God." If you let the Spirit of God lead you, God recognizes you as His child. Like today, the Spirit led me. That's how I watched that girl's video, and that's what changed everything. That's what changed. Some of you guys are being led by the Spirit to watch this video. On your own, you didn't want to watch it, but somehow you found yourself watching this video. Because God had a message here for you. If you had your own way, you probably wouldn't even click on this. Because you'd be like, what is this girl? This girl is back again. What is she talking about? But God is leading you to watch this because He knows that from this video, there's going to be a message for you. And the part that I was talking about that when I was praying that I said I want God's will to be done in my life, not my will. And I want to decrease while he increase in my life. It's um, John 3.30. It says he must increase, but I must decrease. I'm going to read how that came about. It's John 3.26 to 30. I'm reading the NLT version. This is talking about John the Baptist. They say, so John's disciple came to him and said, Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River. This is the last scripture I have. So John's disciple came to him and said, Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River, the one you identified as the Messiah, is also baptizing people. And everybody is going to him instead of coming to us. John replied, No one can receive anything unless, unless God gives it from heaven. You yourself know how plainly I told you. I am not the Messiah. You see how John the Baptist was so selfless? Uh -huh. He was so humble. He he did not come to this world to change the will of God. He stayed in God's will. 
He told them, I have told you several times that I'm not the Messiah. Some people, they forget, they get jealous. Oh, Jesus is now baptizing people and nobody's coming to me anymore. Everybody's going to his Jesus. And before you know, they start having hatred or jealousy or anger. He did not do that. He said, I have told you several times. He stayed in the will of God. He did not deviate. Typical example of when you follow God's will and you don't switch back and forth when things change. I love John the Baptist. He said, I've told you I'm not the Messiah. I'm only here to prepare the way for him. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride. And the best man is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. Therefore, I am filled with joy at his success. He must become greater and greater. And I must become less and less. This is the NLT version of um, he must increase, but I must decrease. I like the way they say it in NLT. They say he must become greater and greater. And I must become less and less. Think about it. In this time that we're in, how many times have you heard anybody talk about somebody else like that saying, this person has to keep succeeding while I keep, the, while I keep going down? People are always trying to compete with each other, trying to succeed. I, oh, no, no, I want to I want to do better than this person. It's like they're, they're, they're doing it's like a race or something or competition. But John the Baptist said, no, Jesus Christ must keep going up while I become. I become less and less. I become less popular while Jesus Christ, because he knew that he was following God's will for his life. If he was following the worldly way, he would have been like, oh, no, no, no. We need to go stop that man from baptizing people. Oh, you know what? Let's go there. Let's go fight with him. Why is he doing what we're doing? No, he stayed in his lane because he knew what the will of God for his life was. So today, the question is, do you know what God's will is for you? Like, what, what do you think you're here for? Some of you already know, some don't. If you know, I encourage you to start doing it now. Because maybe you've already wasted a lot of time. Go down on your knees, tell him, I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me, I'm ready to do your will. Now, if you don't know, go and pray to God. Tell him, God, help me. Help me recognize your will. Tell me what you want me to do here so that I'm not doing the wrong thing. Please, I really want to do what you sent me here for. I don't know what it is. I need your help. Sincerely ask him. Pray. Keep praying and make sure you meditate on it. Wait. See if he will tell you. He could show you in a dream too. God speaks to his children. Just make sure that you've given your life to him. Repent. And truly mean it when you repent. Don't just repent because you want to hear from him or you want to know what your will is and then you go back. No. Repent because you know it's the right thing to do. Thank you so much for listening to this message. I feel so relieved giving this message. I feel like something just left me. <laughs> it's been a big burden, heavy burden on me. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Oh, God. I didn't even read you guys' um, comments. Oh, my God. I got all these comments. I didn't... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't read all your comments. Oh, wow. Thank you, guys. I love you guys so much. Oh, wow. Sorry, I was just reading all the scriptures that I had. I had so many scriptures. I hope that you guys can share this video so your friends can watch it. You never know. Somebody has been trying, maybe battling with, um, I know a lot of people, especially popular people, because I used to be out there doing shows. And some of the popular people, what I notice is what is holding them back from coming to God is because they have a lot of friends and they have a lot of people that will make fun of them <laughs> and say, what? You've joined them too? Are you telling me you're born again too? Girl, you're no longer cool. We can't hang with you. And that's something that's holding them back. And it just makes me laugh because it's like people worship people more than they worship God. Like people fear people's opinion more than they fear God's opinion. Like people are scared to lose friends. What do you need friends for when you have God? 
Let God be your father, your everything, your friend. What do you need friends for? If your friends are not bringing you closer to God, then you don't need to be hanging with them. Any friend that is taking you away from the will of God, that's not your friend. I'm telling you, any friend that is taking you away from the will of God, that's not your friend. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody says. If your friends are mocking you because you're born again, or if your friends are making fun of you because you've given your life to God, that's not your friend. You need to unfriend them. Your friends should bring you closer to God. Your friends should support what you're doing for God. If you lose friends because you gave your life to God, guess what? God is going to put people in your life that will bring, that will help you with the will, His will for your life. He will bring people that will help you with fulfilling that will. Don't think of how he's going to do it. He knows how he's going to do it. He's the master planner. He's a master planner. People have traveled to places where they don't know anybody. They, they don't even have family there. But they were able to get help, live somewhere, survive. Because God connected them with people. Divine helpers. Only God can do that. So stop thinking that, oh, if, you, if somebody you know doesn't help you, you will suffer. No. Your help comes from God. Your help comes from God. Your help comes from God. Not from man. Not from man. Not from man. Not from man. I've seen people that have no cars. All of a sudden, God touches the heart of somebody that has a lot of cars. And they just... He gives them the address or somehow he connects them with them and they get a free car from a stranger they even know. These things happen. Now, if you're not a believer, this sounds kind of strange. You'll be like, what is she talking about? That's not possible. Because you don't believe that you're not a believer. We believe. We believe. Just the same way we believe in God, even though we haven't seen him, is the same way we believe that he can do these things for us. You get it? Father, Lord, I thank you for this message. I say, oh God, that you bless everybody that is watching this. But I pray, oh God, that you should, you will help them, oh God. You will help them. You will help them fulfill that purpose that you have sent them here for. Let them not waste away, oh God. Let them not leave out their will. But let them leave your will. Let them do that which you have sent them to do. Visit them. Touch their hearts. Let them know what that will is, what your will is for them. So they're not wasting away. A lot of people are just living a life, a life to please the devil. And they're not doing what you sent them here for. John the Baptist came here and he did exactly what you sent him to do. Jesus Christ came and he did exactly what you sent him here to do. A lot of people in the Bible came and they did what you wanted them to do. And up till today, we can still make reference to some of the things that they did. But well, some of us are here wasting. We don't know that we are supposed to be doing your work. And we're wasting. Help us, Lord. Have mercy. Direct our parts, oh God. Bring us back to where we're supposed to be. In the name of Jesus. Anybody that is taking us away from your will, cut that person off of our lives in the name of Jesus. We will not be ashamed of you, Lord. We will not be ashamed of you. We will do your work. Let us not be carried away by what we have or with what we have. Let us not be carried away with the little blessing that we have. Because you can take it away from us if you choose to. We appreciate what you've given us. But we're your servants, and we want to do what you sent us here to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ah, yeah, ah. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> I love you guys. Let me go. I think <laughs> I've given the message. I feel better. Feel free to share. I love you. Have a blessed evening, okay? Bye-bye.